We did it guys. This is the last video of the four part camera basic series today. Um, I'm going to be talking about kind of the organization and workflow that goes in to um, you know, taking the pictures but then putting the pictures or video onto your computer and running them through you know, certain programs and editing, exporting, all of that fun stuff. The remainder of this video will just be screen capture because I am awesome and I screwed up the audio of the rest of the video. So yay me. So once you have all of your content on your SD card from the pictures and video you have taken, you want to copy them over to your computer. So the other day I hung out with a friend in Dallas and we were shooting some stuff for a video that I will be posting on my channel next week, um, but I'm just going to kind of show you my workflow with that content. So I have it all in an SD card. I am going to put the SD card into my computer and copy over some pictures to show you my workflow for that. Usually when you are um, shooting on a camera, you have two options of shooting RAW or shooting JPEG, or sometimes you can shoot RAW plus JPEG. The majority of the time you want to shoot RAW. The file size is bigger than JPEG, but RAW has the most information in the picture and so it's going to be the easiest to really pull out all of the colors in it and edit it and get the picture looking the best it can be. JPEG is good for smaller, fi for smaller file sizes, so if you are maybe, you know, transferring the pictures via Wi-Fi or you just need, um, you know, a super quick, easy to transfer picture, maybe just do JPEG, but I do raw pictures 90% of the time. Uh, this time through, for some reason my camera was set on JPEG, so I'm just dealing with JPEGs right now. So what I do is stick in the SD card into the computer and I double click it and then I copy over all of my pictures into a designated folder inside of another folder just called pictures on my Lacey hard drive. I am using a external hard drive because there is not enough room on my SSD on my MacBook Pro. I only have 256 gigs so that is just used for my applications um, and stuff like that so there is room for um, my applications to use that kind of space. The hard drive is USB 3.0, so it is super speedy, and I usually don't have any problems when editing pictures or editing video with lag. So the two applications that I use for pictures are Lightroom and Photoshop. Lightroom is my main application, and then I only go into Photoshop when I have to do some heavy lifting, like uh, you know cropping out something in the picture that's not supposed to be there. Um, or stuff like that. So these applications are underneath Adobe. This means you get a application to download, it lives on your toolbar, and you're able to download any of the applications that your heart desires from Adobe. This comes at a price point of $30 a month for a student, or like $60, $70 a month if you're not a student. And if you just want Lightroom plus Photoshop, so just the photography package, it is cheaper at $10 a month. So hopping into Lightroom, I will now import the pictures that I just copied over onto my hard drive. Now when I'm importing them into Lightroom, this is not moving the pictures. This is simply pointing Lightroom to um, the place where I copied the pictures over onto my hard drive. So Lightroom is just a way to make sense and organize the pictures from the folder that you already have created on your computer or on your external hard drive. So now you can view and switch in between the images and such and kind of, you know, go through the pictures and maybe flag the ones you like or delete the ones you don't like. Um, it is very easy to navigate. So I am going to click on one and show you kind of the develop tab. This is where you can edit your pictures and, you know, clean them up, do whatever your heart desires to them. Once you, you know, have a look that you like, you can export them. Now, one thing I want to kind of touch on with Lightroom is the presets. You can download these great presets from different companies. I use the Visco Cam uh, presets. You might be familiar with that because the Visco Cam app on the iPhone and Android is super popular for Instagrammers. They also release these uh, packs that you can, um, packs of presets that you can apply to your pictures to give that cool film look.
So once you're done with editing your picture, you can export them. Lightroom has a set of great tools to export your pictures and customize the size of them. Your pictures are originally super huge, so like 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. I usually keep it around um, like 1,500 pixels width if I am posting to any social media like Facebook or Tumblr, so I can go down here and press long edge 1,500 pixels, um, and I usually just specify that the pictures that I am exporting are the edits, so I'll put um, edit as the suffix or prefix of the file name, and I will export them into the same folder that I put my pictures in in the first place, so they are all in the same place. So moving on to video, this is kind of the same concept in that I find the video files on the SD card and I simply just drag and drop into a specific designated folder in my footage folder. I have already put these files into my Dallas folder in my footage folder so I'm going to go ahead and open up Premiere, create a new project, and bring you in to a blank canvas in there so I can show you kind of my workflow in Premiere. So once I am into Premiere, I will import the footage that I previously had copied over from my SD card. Um, I like to organize my footage so it's kind of separated from, you know, any music I import or any um, you know, any grain or titles I bring in from After Effects or any of that, so I can kind of just organize it through this um, bins system. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new timeline. I keep all of my timelines 1080p, 24 frames per second, and if I have any footage that I want to use for slow-mo, I will shoot that on my Canon DSLR and just do 720p 60 frames per second. So that means when I drop my 720p 60 frames per second footage into a 1080 24 frames per second timeline, I am going to need to enlarge that 720 footage so it will fill up the whole 1080 and then I will slow down the footage by going and modifying the speed, and so instead of 100%, it will be 40%, because 0.4 times 60 is equal to 24, so I just conform that 60 frames per second footage to 24 frames per second footage on my 24 frames per second timeline, and now it is smooth sailing, the motion looks great, and I have my slow motion. So I'm just gonna put a couple more clips together here, make a little movie. drop in some music, and voila, we have our little 12 second movie. If I want to add some effects on specific clips, I typically use RGB curves, three-way color corrector, sharpen, um, and sometimes the luma curve. Those are typically the effects that I use to color my video. I can also add a adjustment layer over all of my clips if I want to apply these effects over the entire timeline instead of just one specific clip. So now that we have our movie, I am going to export this so we can upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or wherever our heart desires. So I'm going to go into export settings. I usually do H264. This is the best Kodak if you are putting your videos on the web. Um, if you're not, if it's not for the web and you want like best quality, um, you know, the best quality, the closest to what it is when you're editing, I would go with a ProRes Kodak, which is native to Mac machines. So I'm going to export this movie H.264. I will go down into, um, further down to the render settings. I do a two pass instead of one pass, and then I usually up the bit rate just to, you know, make it, make it a little less compressed. 
So once I have those settings, that is usually all I do. I just make sure my export is in the um, location I want it. I organize my exports and my sequences and all of that in my Premiere folder. It works well for me. I will export that out and we have our movie. That is basically my photo and video workflow. I am a big fan of Adobe and Adobe Creative Cloud. I use their applications a ton. I use them for pictures, for video, for any animations I have to do. Um, you should really check them out and check out all of the programs and all the applications they have to offer because you can get all of them for a monthly subscription fee that really isn't terrible if you are consistently getting jobs. I can see how, you know, paying $30 a month or $70 a month can be annoying if you are not getting consistent creative jobs. But in the long run, it is worth it. It's worth it to learn these programs. They're fantastic and they are becoming, you know, really the industry standard. So if you have any questions regarding any of this stuff, uh, please leave a comment below or find me on Twitter and uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm super excited for next week because I am taking a break from these photo video videos and I'm going to be doing uh, more, you know, travel content or maybe some vlogs and then coming up late summer, I'm going to be starting my creative TV, creative spaces TV series. So, Keep on a lookout, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.